Hi, this is Kim Watson. Welcome to a review of the COT analysis. Now, I'm doing this because I get a lot of questions on where do you find the data, what do you, how do you use it. So I thought I'll give you some ideas of how I use it. You'll be able to see some um, examples as we run through here. Um, now, one thing I would say, it's historic. <laughs> now, when I mean it's historic, it is historic. It, it looks uh, the data that I get at some point later on uh, on a Friday evening in the UK uh, is actually a snapshot of last Tuesday that's just gone. So it's historic. Um, but then it, all the figures I'm looking at there onwards uh, backwards are historic too. So it's it's a guide. It's not an immediate. This is what's happening right this minute. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't move that quick. The data itself comes from US Commodities Futures Trading Commission. Now, you can go to their website, which is cftc.gov, and get the data. However, I'm going to give you my preferred version of it now, but before then, I, I won't uh, leave out, of course, the CME itself. The CME uh, Commitment of Trade uh, have their own COT report, the CME Commitment of Traders. Exactly the same report, it's just shown out in shown in a different format, and you can split this down and look at the different uh, the detail that's behind it quite simply, which is quite nice. In fact, this is what I used to use a lot, and then I come across um, this version here. It's uh, from Tradingster.com. Um, I don't know them from Adam. Uh, they they have a lovely site from my my perspective. I use this to do my analysis. Now I don't show this on a weekly basis anymore because there's too many numbers there. People tend to get a little bit frozen by the numbers and get switched off. But obviously some people out there have been asking about cot analysis. Cot analysis can get, give us some good clues to when a market might be changing uh, direction. And when it's all, it may be technically already changing direction when we see the the close, but it's more likely to be a confirmation. The um, asset managers, for example, well, let's split these groups down, and so you understand where the groups are. The first group here, um, the dealer intermediary group here, is really these 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 are the guys that are effectively on the sell side so they're the market makers so they all take the positions of traders that want to deal with them uh, the different dealers and they'll take the sell side so they'll be the opposite way around to everything else these guys the asset managers these are the pension funds and the, the big funds institutional money uh, which is to me it's as it's it's classed as what i'd say as a slower uh, if, you, if you're looking at speed it's quite a slow moving um speed so it's it's, it's not running uh, l the sort of speeds you'd see off the scale <laughs> uh, sometimes on the leverage funds now the leverage funds are good old-fashioned um hedge funds uh, etc uh, that, that, that are more likely to as I say be fast moving uh, what they do is tend to be more uh, quite quickly reactionary um, so that, that's a, the, the faster money and then the other reportables these guys are really can be central banks uh, can be huge institutions um, but they're, they're reported the, the positions are big enough to be reported but in general terms take are relatively uh, less significant in terms of the movement here and normally the smaller positions that are open so that's that's that part of the, uh, the, the what we're looking at here you, you'll see across the top here you've got long positions short positions and spread spread I'm not interested in the, the, this is this is no interest to me personally because they're balanced it will be where the positions balance completely there's there's they're just playing the spreads effectively what I am interested in is really this group here and this group here but we will look at what the dealers are doing the, the opposite side of the market is doing as well but these are the most important ones for me and what they're doing so on a weekly basis I, I will be just looking at the net positions that there's, they've got of uh, the longs minus the shorts or vice versa <laughs> it depends on the size but so I'm looking at looking at long versus the shorts which you'll see down the bottom of this chart in a moment when I scroll it up 
that to me is more significant. What I also look at, I tend to look at the movement of the longs versus the shorts. Now, um, here you can see, okay, these long positions, they've reduced the uh, pension funds, etc., have reduced their long positions by 5,000 positions there. So it's, it's a lot of money. <laughs> um, so that, 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 that's been reduced. So there's, that's suggesting that if they're getting rid of their long positions, they're possibly thinking the market may be going down here for the euro. So this is the euro dollar I'm looking at, by the way. Um, now, their short positions, they've increased those a little bit. So again, that's a, more of a bearish thing. So that they're, they're suggesting, this is suggesting the market's pushing south. The hedge funds. But they, oh, I should say, but they are net long overall here the, between the two. So if you took the 160 from the 291, you'll see they're net long, but with a bearish, more bearish outlook. So the leverage funds themselves, now you can see just purely on the size here, there, that they are bearish. <laughs> and again, they've reduced their, their, their um, short holdings and increased, sorry, reduced their long holdings and increased their short holdings. So again, bearish. So this gives me, I mean, when these are working in tandem, when these are both bearish, both the uh, asset managers and the leverage managers, to me, this, this suggests that the, uh, the, the bigger money, the, the money that has probably more analysts looking at it than anything else, is thinking it's going to uh, be a bearish market. Now, of course, uh, with the leverage funds, some of their positions may just be literally uh, with hedge funds hedged. So they may have long positions in the market. But this this idea of positioning here would give me an idea of how they're seeing what they're needing to do to hedge their books and still give me an idea of um, their overall view. As I say, not interested in these at all. And the dealers will look at in an overall bigger picture on the chart in the moment. So let me take this off. So that's where we are, really just looking at longs and shorts. Now when we look at them, uh, scroll this up a little bit further, this, this tells me everything I need to know, or, um, and not everything because I'm looking at the change in, it, in these figures, but aside of the change, this is showing me the, the picture as it stands at the time. Now I've got to take the pen off here, otherwise I'm not going to see it. And the great thing is when you scroll over, uh, just scroll, uh, roll over this, you can see shorts 35%. Uh, obviously that's going to be the other side's going to be long <laughs> vice versa here now and you can then see well are they, are we, we know the shorts have increased the net short positions for both of these has increased um, but um, the leveraged money the hedge funds are much more short already they are bearish on this market okay so that's the picture that's where they are that's the overall picture on a snapshot of a single week want to see more well you just scroll down this chart a little bit further and you can see them all overlaid here now what I'm going to do firstly is I'm going to take some of these off I'm not interested in non uh, reportables we'll take those off and other reportables we'll take those off which just leaves us with three lovely lines and at the price at the top here let me just write, get my pen back so I can stop, stop getting things coming up on the screen. So we've got price on the top here, price chart. So, so we can start then looking at uh, what's going on here. We've got the asset managers, pension funds, blue. The hedge funds, leverage money, green. And we've got the dealers, which are the other side of the market. So these are always going to be the other side of the market. Okay, so let's start with first things first. You've got a zero level here. This is the point of where these two uh, groups here, whenever they're above this zero, I'm going to try and draw it right the way across the chart here. Let's just get it. There we go. And then I'm going to change to a pen. There we go. So when when, pri when these guys are above, uh, they're net bullish. When they're below, they're net bearish. Now you'll see, um, I can't take the dealer off for a moment, but you'll see, you, can, you can see the green amongst the black here. And so they've been net bearish, um, the, uh, the um, hedge funds, since around about late, uh, April, May time. Uh, they've been net bearish. Um, now what you'll see at the same time, the, the slow, I, t I talked about the speed of the two traders, around about that May, April, May time, and well you can see the chart above here what was happening but uh, these guys um, are 
starting to get a little bit more bearish themselves. They've been coming down. Yes, there's been a few weeks of ups and we may may catch it, but the, the, the overall picture for both trade both traders have been, or groups of traders have been downwards. The zero line, when they cross the zero line, when they both cross the zero line, that's more significant because it's uh, you're more likely to get more confirmed uh, bearishness of the market and this uh, what we're going to do now is just take all that off we've got from 2000 data back to 2009 we can scroll this open a little bit further on to see how far I need to scroll I hope that's good uh, not a great deal um, and then I'm going to draw on here again and use this line again just to put the line across the zero as clear as I can there we go and then I give me a pen and you look at what's happened here so we really, really as remember we're looking at the the uh, the blues and the greens uh, now the blues actually the greens took a while to I mean they, they were quite late before they they got bullish but look where they got bullish um, around well around it's not necessarily precise how I just drawn that so bear with me but they they got bu bullish around that time uh, went from the zero over now the big money was starting to get probably bullish from uh, when they, their crossover was back in 2016. Us as swing traders can't do a lot with that because it, <laughs> it ain't helping us. Um, so that sort of information isn't necessarily going to say woohoo. But when they've both gone bullish, that's when it's um, uh, when you've got both groups of, remember these are slower, they're gradual. Uh, when they're both going bullish, um, then then the trend is more likely to be a stronger pickup and that's what we're seeing here now you can go back and look at this and I'll leave you to uh, play with it to your heart's desire um, but you'll, you'll see that you'll generally get a stronger a stronger upward trend when these two cross back over the zero line so what else should we be uh, looking at well, the next thing really is extremes, and we saw a great extreme. Now, I'm here. We we, we were getting both the um, uh, the uh, asset management money was get, get, getting more and more bullish at this point, and we, we were seeing uh, the the hedge fund money at this level bullish, and it was it was pretty yeah much getting there and but look here this from the, the, the sell side guys they were hitting I mean if you go right the way back they were hitting the they've now got this is a, a historic low here for this data from 2009 onward so that's a historic low when it's coming to these sort of more significant levels and you'll you'll see it um, uh, in, in other places I mean back in I mean this was a bit slow of a uh, in terms of the historics because it, it actually moved quite considerably price at that point but um, here we've got a, a real historic low uh, coming into play I say historic in terms of the data that's available um, and when that sort of comes through um, who else when, if they're sold to it a, a lot of people who else is going to buy it sort of gets to that point where we get all the all the sentiment is so bullish um, and of course it, yeah, you'll say that these negative here, but remember they're on the other side of it so they're effectively when they're tapping on the bottom here it's it's a sh sign that that market is starting to get bullish strongly bullish now if I uh, or has put with possible turnover let's just pull this out a little bit further and you can see um, some of the peaks in here so, so when when they've got very bearish likewise back here uh, thing, things were getting particularly bearish in fact the bearishness started um, and, and continued to get more and more bearish here effectively uh, or the, the hedge funds and the pen, um, uh, pension funds the big funds they were getting more and more bearish and you can see the extremes that we were sitting here uh, so it's the opposite way around and it was it, that, but they got bearish but the market still carried on so it isn't an absolute it's certainly not a timing tool uh, that's for sure um, how you can use it but what it does tell you is well that this market's probably getting close to basing out and then when you start analyzing the sort of uh, nearer term data let's just go back a little bit and zoom into this now when you when you start looking at this a little bit more let's bring it back a bit have I lost some data oops I'm, I'm looking at the wrong group here let's just scroll this back here that's it when you when, when you've got got a more a, a more focused 
of view on this you can then start looking in the markets and looking at what the technicals are showing us so when you get to this point let's just uh, scroll in a little bit so you you can see that they're extreme and they're still buying here but these guys can can be late um, uh, they, they can be a bit late if they go early they're not normally wrong <laughs> effectively so when when they start going and start reducing down significantly uh, you'll probably see that the market does similar similar but these guys actually went look on the first peak and that peaked there right together um, and they started moving off on the earlier peak so you can as I say it's not a precise timing tool and there's a there's quite a bit of time between those points but you can at these uh, more aggressive peaks look to okay when when's it going to give and it may be months i mean it, it went right away from uh through to april and it was really as we know uh, into may when it started coming off uh properly the market started coming off so when when you see it start breaking off there and you can see the 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 um, hedge funds are starting to get short and bang they've gone negative um they're, they're net negative at this point here uh, okay, some of this price actions, all, well, quite a lot of this price actions already happen, but you can look and you can be drawing trend lines across the price levels, look at what's going on here and perhaps get a better time. But uh, that was a significant uh, drop off on the on the charts there. So you, you were literally running from uh, the 124 uh, sort of zone right the way down uh, to the 111, the 115, uh, 115, so 115.26 sort of thing, quite a big old chunk of profit, oh, I say potential profit in that movement. And if they're both still moving down in your swing trader, you could become a long-term position player and be playing these maybe longer. So that's how, so some ways at how you might use it. Firstly then, just to summarize, look at um, the, um, the, the crosses of the zero lines for these traders. So when they both get bullish, um, they, there's still potential in the market for sort of further upside. So the crossovers, overs, overs. Remember the hedge fund gets negative first and it, by the time they get negative, sometimes it's too low, you've le left a lot behind. The signal's already there and you could be looking at divergences between these price levels and you could say, well, actually it peaked up again there, but it was, it was possible, it's possible you could look at things like that. It's not really too important. It's really to see and keep you on the right side of the money at the mostly these reports not necessary to get you into positions but when they do uh, give the opportunities and as I say you get the crossovers it may be a bit late in this particular case it may have been early opportunities but even if you do get the crossovers there's still probably a, a good chunk of price to be had still uh, some, some good trading some bearish trading to be done at those points I mean this did kick, carry on and it's kicking still down here effectively but um, I'm looking at the, 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 the quicker gains other points then is is when you when you've got the extreme and you can go scroll these right away back and look at I say scroll them back drag them open this right up and when you get these extreme points that's where you, where you, you can be looking for opportunities in the market but these could be much more aggressive um, it, may, it may give a, a, a lesser movement until you get a little bit more confirmation in terms of what the what the bigger money is doing. It did take a long time for these guys to suddenly start selling off here, and there, it was, there was news to help help these things always, as it always to push these guys over the brink a little bit. But they're still slow, and they're still uh, net bearish at the moment. Oh, I say net bearish, but getting bear more and more bearish. Um, they're still net bullish, but uh, getting be closer towards being bearish. These guys are proper bearish, uh, and it might go the other way at some point. Watch for the crossovers of the zero line, uh, also from the the dealers. Uh, that they haven't done that yet, so it's not even really got massively. I mean, we could see uh, if if they. These, these two start selling off more we could see the dealers go the opposite way and get more of a confirmation of this bearish tone on the euro now it isn't to say they they won't all switch around and turn this isn't there's no this isn't a timing thing for bottoms or anything they're not one thing what they aren't um okay you may say well the uh, hedge funds are getting pretty aggressive and um you, you could look for times when they've been quite so aggressive before where it's right away back here when they had such larger or more larger positions what happened when they start unwinding those we're well, just keeping an eye on what they're doing because they, they their timing is is half decent on here and you can back test it 
So there we go. Hopefully you find that useful. As I said, the um, website to look at and the, the, I think the best one is tradingster.com. There's a whole lot of other analysis here. You can just look at the long positions. You can run into short positions. I think it's all unnecessary uh, in terms of what we're looking. We really did this, this, this summary here of net positions, what's going on compared to price. You can build up your own um, picture and, and, and see how you, you you might apply. I, I like, as I say, I like looking at the fast money. I like the crossovers. I like um, I like these extreme positions with the dealer money where you can scroll back. You can, as I say, just run it right away back here and look at the alternates, the, the, the three. Um, you can hide one of these if you don't want the asset money manager there. So you can just look at what's happening there with the uh, lever the hedge funds money and the opposite side if you want to take the dealer money off because it's it's getting in your way and it's making it too confusing switch it off it's all button operated here I, I as i say personally i think it's great i would have them overlaying one another like this so you can actually see exactly what the two groups of big money are doing hope you find this useful and uh, let me know give me comments anything you want clarified just pop it on the bottom here and uh, please do uh, subscribe to our channel Bye for now.